We will start with the stupid ones and move on to the absolute trash. Number 6. The Isolator Helmet Hugo Gernsback designed the Isolator Helmet in 1925 with the primary purpose of improving focus by eliminating distractions. The main purpose of the invention was to isolate any disturbance from the wearer and help them focus on their work. The Isolator Helmet, which resembled a heavy diving helmet with a narrowed viewing slit, cocooned the wearer in isolation. Sometimes it would be completely airtight, and there would be an oxygen cylinder attached to the helmet which supplied fresh oxygen inside the helmet. It protected users from noisy surroundings and visual stimulation by forming a barrier around them and the outside world. The tiny slit gave a confined range of view, reducing distractions and reinforcing concentration on the job at hand. The isolation helmet was most likely made from materials commonly available such as thick alloys of metal for the exterior of the helmet and glasses for the viewing slit. Despite its good aims, the isolator helmet presented practical obstacles and unforeseen consequences. One such case involves a wearer starting a fire because they were unable to hear a warning or comprehend environmental signs while working. Another instance reports that one person's head became caught in the helmet and he was unable to remove it. He had to remain in that position for 10 hours until being rescued by cutting the helmet in half. This episode demonstrated the perils of complete seclusion and the possibility of mishaps and negative effects. Hugo was faced with a lot of criticism over the idea, and he eventually had to apologize publicly. Number 5. The Pneumatic Tube Mail Engineer William Murdoch invented the first workable pneumatic tube mail system in 1799. It entailed a network of underground tubes that linked post offices and other vital points throughout cities. The technology used compressed air to send capsules with letters and small parcels down through tubes at high speeds. Pneumatic tube postal systems arose from the demand for quicker and more effective letter transportation in rapidly expanding towns in the early 19th century. As the need for faster mail delivery increased, cities such as Paris and London built large-scale pneumatic tube systems. The pneumatic tube networks were constantly maintained by operators who ensured that the tubes were clear of debris and that the capsules were in working order. To avoid service disruptions, maintenance required regular inspections, cleaning, and repairs. Despite its effectiveness, the pneumatic tube postal system encountered various problems. Tubes may become blocked or destroyed, causing delays in mail delivery. Users may struggle to grasp how to utilize the system effectively leading to confusion and errors when sending messages. Mistakes in mailings were a major and daily issue because it was the sole means of communication in some places, and official instructions and information were only delivered in this way. One famous malfunction occurred in London in 1927, when a pneumatic tube exploded, causing extensive damage to neighboring buildings and injuring several individuals. The incident exposed the risks of operating massive pneumatic tube systems, raising safety concerns. Finally, due to the impractical management system and the maintenance of such a complicated mechanism without computers on modern equipment, the pneumatic mail system was quickly replaced by modern technology. Number 4. The Cat Piano The Cat Piano, additionally referred to as the Cats and Clavier, was invented in Europe in the 17th century. It was invented by Athanasius Kircher, a German Catholic scholar with diverse interests in music, physics, and technology. The cat piano had the construction of a standard piano, but it also held a row of cats. Each cat was assigned a distinct chamber behind a keyboard-like interface. The cats were specifically chosen for the purpose and selected based on their meowing tone or pitch. Then they were arranged inside the specific chambers in order of the chords that match their meowing chi tone. The tails of the cats were attached to specific keys. When a key was pressed, the system triggered a nail or spike, which poked the cat's tail and caused it to yowl. Kircher's cat piano design was motivated by his interest in both music and odd contraptions. Around the 17th century, Europe saw a surge in automata and unusual inventions, driven by the junction of scientific interest and artistic expression. One particularly strange incident with the cat piano allegedly occurred during a performance for a distinguished audience. When the keys had been pressed, the cats responded unexpectedly, hissing, scratching, and seeking to escape their confines. The scene generated mixed joy and terror, emphasizing the invention's harshness and impracticality. The cat piano was neither widely accepted 
nor commercially successful due to growing public outrage and ethical issues. Its reputation as a symbol of animal brutality eventually contributed to its extinction when it became extinct and confined to the annals of strange historical curiosities. Number 3. X-ray Shoe Fitting Machine The X-ray Shoe Fittings Machine emerged in the early 20th century, with the first practical installation in 1927 by American entrepreneur Adrian S. Flatt. The idea came from a desire to provide clients with a better approach to ensure the correct shoe fit. Customers could view their feet within their shoes using fluoroscopy technology, which was supposed to ensure a flawless fit. Buyers would place the feet into the machine, which was typically a wood or metal cabinet equipped with a fluoroscope. The gadget produced x-rays, allowing consumers and salesmen to see the skeleton of their feet and how they fit inside the shoes. Sales staff would then alter the shoe's fit according to the x-ray image, striving for better comfort and appropriate fit. Despite its widespread use, the X-ray shoe sizing machine has significant downsides. It radiated tremendous amounts of radiation, posing serious health concerns to both clients and salespeople. One noteworthy incident occurred in 1950, when a young girl in Oklahoma mistakenly left her foot in the machine for a lengthy period, resulting in burns from radiation and subsequent toe amputations. This incident exposed the risks of the technology and added to rising worries about its safety. The use of X-ray shoe sizing machines decreased dramatically in the 1950s as people became more aware of the health dangers linked with radiation exposure. By the end of the 1950s and the beginning of the 1960s, nearly every state in the United States had prohibited the use of such machines, resulting in their gradual removal from stores. Number 2. The Baby Cage In the year 1934, Emma Red the inventor, was inspired by seeing how city dwellers lacked access to outside space for their young children. She intended to offer a solution that would enable babies to enjoy sunlight and clean air without having to leave their flat. The baby cage was usually made of wire mesh and resembled a huge bird cage. It was intended to be lightweight but strong enough to hang firmly from the exterior of apartment windows. The cage has a door for convenient access to place the infant inside and remove them as needed. Hooks or brackets were used to secure the cage to the window's framework and sustain its weight. Urban dwelling families, particularly those living in high-rise apartments with limited outdoor space, were the target customers. Everything was okay until in 1937, a baby cage malfunctioned, causing the cage to detach from the apartment window and swing dangerously many stories above the ground, generating media attention. While no babies suffered injuries, the incident raised safety concerns and generated public outrage, contributing to the baby cage's drop in popularity. Critics jokingly referred to it as a baby bird cage or jail for babies, emphasizing its unusual and contentious nature. Cartoons and satirical paintings of newborns in cages became popular throughout the era, contributing to the invention's humorous image. Following a significant public protest and safety concerns, baby cages were discontinued. Although the baby cage was used until 1948, it was never heard of again since then. Finally, number one, the tooth telephone. The tooth telephone arose in the early 20th century, a period of rapid technical progress and experimentation. The tooth telephone worked on the idea of bone conduction, in which sound vibrations were conveyed from the enamel of the teeth through the inner ear. Users would bite onto a metal rod attached to a receiver, which would translate sound waves into vibrations produced mechanically. These vibrations enter via the teeth, getting around the external auditory system and directly activating the inner ear, resulting in sound perception. You have to admit that it was kinda cool. Although the tooth telephone was an innovative concept, it had practical obstacles and garnered mixed feedback from users. Some users considered the experience awkward and unusual, as the vibrations against their teeth could be disturbing. Others praised the gadget's ability to communicate discreetly, especially in noisy surroundings. It was also intended to benefit folks with hearing issues or hearing impairment. Despite its revolutionary design, the tooth telephone suffered from technological challenges and safety concerns. Electrical shorts or defective wiring may cause unintentional shocks or discomfort for consumers. On rare occasions, Poor use or manufacturing faults resulted in injuries, such as damage to the structure of teeth or oral tissues. In worse cases, 
the battle inside could get swollen or blast inside the mouth, which wouldn't be so good. Perhaps it'll showcase the innovative power and also the concept of super modern communication technology. But at the end of the day, it was not practical enough. But who knows what comes next?